All right, everybody, welcome back. This is the second lesson in the Agriculture Unit 5 in AP Human Geography. And today we're going to focus on the Columbian Exchange, still focusing on more historical agriculture stuff. The objective is to explain the patterns of diffusion, such as the Columbian Exchange, because I know that you've probably talked about the Columbian Exchange in the past, but we're going to focus more now on how it affects the world and the view of AP Human Geography. Now, yesterday, you had to work on your agricultural revolutions and know those three agricultural revolutions. And today's question is, how did the second agricultural revolution change society in relation to the Industrial Revolution? Because you have to imagine, while the Industrial Revolution is happening, the second agricultural revolution is happening at the same time. As we industrialized and made factories and had machines, we brought those machines and created products out into the fields. But remember, during the Industrial Revolution, that's when we have the second stage of the demographic transition model. That's when we have the population explosion. And we know that when population explosions happen, and we know during the Industrial Revolution, that thousands of people migrated from the rural areas of their countries to the urban areas to get jobs in factories. But it's not like they went without food. It's not like all of a sudden they migrated to the city and they didn't have to eat anymore. Food had to come from somewhere. And now you have this vast, empty countryside. Well, the farmers that stayed behind can now justify not only buying machines to make agriculture harvesting faster, but they can justify the expensive cost of these machines because they can have more land and they can grow more food on more land, harvest more food on more land, and use those machines, and now they don't need labor because they have the machines to do it. And this is what paints the picture of our modern day agriculture, of how we are today, right? Lots of people live in the cities, not many people live in the countryside, and the people that do live in the countryside are the ones farming, providing for the rest of the country. Now this is really the, the model of developed countries. It does happen in the developing world. But when you think about our country, the U.S., and how we farm, and we have a small percentage of farmers, it's because of this major shift that happened in history, because of the second agricultural revolution. Now, on to what we did in class today. So, one, we have to understand what the Columbian Exchange is, right? And it gets its name from Christopher Columbus taking his voyage, you know, that ultimately resulted in just 80 million natives dying. But he went to the New World and brought all this great stuff with him. And then he stole all the stuff from the New World and brought it back to Europe. And, you know, it, it's great and it's awesome. We get all these great foods. But we have to look at all the other things that was traded between them and how it really brought our, the two worlds together. And we have to think about more impacts than just food. So... I left you with the question, we have to think, what are the speed impacts of this trade and how did it affect the world today? So I want you to think on that one and we're going to talk about it more the next day in class. Now what you had to complete in class was a menu based on the Columbian Exchange. You had to create a four course meal only using the items listed because these are the things that were exchanged between the two countries. And that's it for the day. So if you have any questions about the Columbian Exchange, what it did, what we're doing, you can ask me before or after school.